So we are live on Facebook. Okay. Uh, we'll start in one minute. So uh, it's four now, uh, we can start. So welcome everyone um, to this uh, special webinar on Pi Approximation Day, uh, which is 22 by seven. So today is 22nd of July. Uh, and we have uh, with us uh, Professor Noyandip Dekaborwa of uh, Tespur University. Um, so uh, let me briefly mention a few things before I introduce the speaker and we go to the talk. Um, first of all, uh, Please, uh, please use the chat uh, option to send any messages during the talk. Uh, it will come directly to me. And after the talk, we'll put this to the speaker, Professor Bhuva. Um, and uh, uh, please uh, do not uh, write uh, unnecessary details in the chat because uh, the messages get lost. Otherwise, if we have too many, uh, too many messages coming in the chat. If there is any issue, please uh, email me or uh, use the chat option again to mention the issue that you have. Um, so let me now introduce our speaker. Uh, so we have uh, Professor Noyandip Dekaboro, who is a professor in the Department of uh, Mathematical Sciences in Tespur University. Uh, professor Borua did his BSc from Cotton College and then did his uh, MSc from IIT Kanpur. He then did his PhD at Tespur University and he has been uh, at Tespur University for a long time. Uh, and since 2015, he is a full professor there. Sorry, 2009, he's a full professor there. Uh, he's an expert in the mathematics of uh, Ramanujan, and he's well known for his research work related to partition identities. Uh, he also spent uh, a, a visiting. He also spent as a visiting uh, postdoc in uh, the University of Urbana Champaign, uh, in the University of Illinois Urbana Champaign, working under Professor Bruce Bruce Burnt, uh, who is a well known expert on Ramanujan's mathematics. So I uh, hand over the stage to Professor Borwa uh, for for the talk. Thank you, Manjil. So I'm sharing the, this content now. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Is it coming? Screen? No. No, sir. Is it coming now? Uh, no, sir. So in the meantime, when uh, Sir shares the screen, uh, let me also mention that. Um... Is it coming now? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Please go ahead. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, thank you, Manjil, for your introduction, uh, and thank you so much for inviting me to deliver this uh, talk through online. So uh, the title I have kept is uh, by the king of constants uh, because this constant is known to all, all means including the general public. Okay. Uh, so I'll be talking about uh, this. Uh, this is the outline and uh, I'll talk about by approximation day, which is today and July 22nd. Then I'll talk about uh, the Pi Day, International Day of Mathematics. And uh, this Pi has a, a long history. So I'll begin with some uh, details about ancient time Pi calculation. Then the, in fact, there are only five mathematical methods to calculate the digits of Pi. And uh, the first method is given by Archimedes. The second one is calculus and uh, related to calculus. Then third is AGM and pi. And fourth is uh, given by Ramanujan and uh, the Ramanujan type series. And the last one is BPP formulas. Yeah, then uh, I will talk about some recent pi calculations. And finally, more tidbits related to pi will be discussed. 
uh, as we know the, the ratio of circumference of any circle uh, to its diameter is always a const constant and this is a widely known constant to every science people and as well as the public and it is denoted by the greek letter pi greek letter pi and this has been a subject of subject of study over the last 4000 years okay so uh, this you can see that uh, the circumference you take the circumference of the circle here and this is the diameter right and uh, if the circumference is c and d is the diameter of the circle then c over d uh, and if i take c1 the circumference of the smaller circle this one c and diameter is this then this is c1 by d1 c1 over d1 and both these two these ratios are same and this is not only for these two circles you take any circle uh, and its circumference and the diameter the ratio is always a constant okay. and this has been known to the ancient greeks and uh, the ancient babylonians and egyptians they also knew that this is almost three times the circumference is three times of the diameter and uh, but a little bit more and how much more so that is the main question And it, uh, this constant also appears in several other contexts, such as movies, poems, PyD, Guinness Book of World Records, and so on. Okay, so we'll be talking about those uh, little things here. Now, today is July 22nd, and uh, we call it as Pi Approximation Day. Uh, because, uh, you, uh, because uh, your 22 by seven, and this is a rational number, because this is, can be expressed as a, ratio of two integers, 22 and seven. And uh, so the, if I expand it in decimal, then you see that this is 3.142857. And again, it will repeat 2857, et cetera. Okay, so you see that this is the periodic part. This is the recurring part. So this will recur again and again. And uh, so, if it is a rational number, then the decimal expansion of a rational number is either this finite or it is recurring infinite, infinite recurring decimal expansion. It is. So 22 by 7 is a rational number and the value is 3.142857. Et okay. And but uh, the, we will see that the pi is actually irrational. This has been proved long quick in 1761 by Lambert. And uh, the the value of decimal expansion of pi, this irrational number pi is 3.141592653, etc. It will go on. And because it is an irrational number, so this decimal expansion will be infinite as well as non-recurring. This will never recur. Okay, like 22 by 7, it will not recur. And you see that this is 3.14, the first uh, two decimal points of 22 by 7 is 3.14. Okay, and here the actual value of pi is also 3.14. Okay, so therefore 22 by 7 is a uh, rational approximation of the irrational number pi. And uh, why this uh, approximation is so important and why it is known to everybody? Uh, we will see that uh, by theory of continued fractions, we can say that pi uh, 22 by 7 is a conversion of the simple continued fraction expansion of pi. Okay, so what is a simple continued fraction expansion of pi? So you uh, you probably know that uh, I can write I can write twenty two by seven as a three plus one over seven. So here it ends here, and uh, on the other hand, uh, you can let me explain here. So uh, le let us take, say, uh, 23 by 5. Okay, so what is the, what, how can I write this? This I can write, sorry. So this is 4 plus uh, 3 by 5. Okay, so 3 by 5, this is another fraction. 
Now this fraction, I will continue. So how can I continue? So this I can write one over five by three, and this I can write four plus one over, this fraction is again continued. So I can write like this. So it is one plus two over three, okay? So this is four plus one over, I can again, one plus, this I can write one, one over what? Three by two. And three by two, I can write one plus, uh, one plus one by uh, half, okay? So one plus half. So you see that 23 over five, this I can write as a fraction, which is continued. Okay, so these, these type of uh, things are called continued fractions and, uh, and it takes so much space. So therefore in simple, we write this as four. This is the integral part, right? This is the integer four, four plus three over five. This is a proper fraction. So this, these are called three, one, two. These are called partial quotients. So one, one, two. So therefore, 23 by five, I can write as a continued fraction. And this is the continued fraction expansion of four, one, one, two. Now the, the important thing is that for any rational number, you can always write a, this type of simple continued fraction, which is finite. There are a finite number of non-zero partial quotients. Okay, here there are one, two, three, four. These are called partial quotients, and there are four partial quotients. Okay, but if, the number is an irrational number. So then it will have an infinite simple continued fraction expansion. And so what do we mean by simple? Simple means the numerators one, one, one. This all numerators will be one, okay? So this is called a simple continued fraction. For example, uh, so if uh, x, your x is an irrational number, then for x, the continued fraction expansion will be a naught plus a one plus one by a two plus one by a three plus etc. So this will be infinite, infinite continued fraction. And because these numerators one one one, these are all ones. So this is called a simple, simple continued fraction. Okay. So if the number x is irrational, then it will have an infinite simple continued fraction expansion. For example, root two. What is the simple continued fraction? Continued fraction expansion of root two, this is one, then two, 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 etc. Okay. So root two, the continued fraction expansion will be one, this. And this is this continued fraction expansion is periodic because this two will be repeated. So we write one, this is the integral part, and two will be repeated. So two, 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 etc. Similarly, E. So what is the continued fraction expansion of E? The well-known constant E. So this is this will be two, integral part is two then one, two, then one, one, four, one, one, six, one, one, eight, et cetera. And you, you can guess what will be the next two terms. Next two terms will be one, one, 10. And then next one, one, 12, et cetera. So one, 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 four, one, one, six, one, one, eight, one, one, 10, one, one, 12, et cetera. So this continued fiction expansion of E has a pattern, you can write, the pattern. What is the pattern? 212. This is 112, 116, 118, etc. The interesting thing is that the continued fraction expansion of pi, the pi, this has no pattern. Till date, we do not know whether pi has any pattern or not in, in, in terms of simple continued fraction expansion. So it is very, uh, very interesting that it has no pattern. Nobody has found any pattern in the simple continued fraction expansion of pi. Now, why these simple continued fraction expansions are important? Because this simple continued fraction expansion, the convergence will give the best approximation of the irrational number. And what do you mean by convergence? Your convergence is nothing but just the, uh, for x is the continued fraction. So what is the convergence of xn? xn will be a naught, a1, a2, and I, I just take up to capital Nx, finite number of terms. Then this is called Nx convergent. So this is called the Nx convergent of the continued fraction expansion of x. Okay, so if we take finite number of terms. Then this, because it is finite, so therefore it is what? This is a rational number. The convergence are rational number, and I can write in terms of Pn over Q. 
QN, where these PN and QNs are integers. Okay. So the, this is called a con conversant. All right. So uh, for example, your continuous friction, simple continuous friction expansion of uh, pi is pi equal to 3, 7, then 15, 1, 292, etc. Okay. So now, uh, so what is the what are what are the convergence? The convergence are what pi is the first term only. Pi is you. What is the second convergence? Second convergence three and seven only two terms. And what is this? This is three plus one by seven. And what is this? This is twenty two over seven. So therefore, we see that twenty two by seven is the is one of the convergence of pi. Okay. So therefore, your uh, twenty two by seven will be. Uh, will approximate the value of pi, the irrational number pi. Remember that 22 by 7 is rational, but it is a rational approximation of the irrational number pi. Okay, so so uh, 22 by 7 is a convergent of pi, convergent of pi. All right, and the simple continuous friction expansion will give the convergence will give the base approximation of the irrational number. Base means that. 22 by 7 is the best ratio which approximate pi for any p by q where q is less than or equal to 7. All right. So that means you cannot get any other approximation better than 22 by 7 when q is less than 7. Q must be greater than 7. All right. So therefore, in the denominator, it, it may be 8 or something here, which will give better approximation to pi. All right. Now, what is the next next uh, uh, conversion? Next conversion is 3, uh, 7, 15. And if I, uh, if I solve it, then you will see that this is nothing but 333 divided by 106. Uh, so this one is 333 divided by 6. So, so this is the next conversion. That means this is the next best conversion when the denominator is less than or equal to 106. So this was 7 and this was 106. So therefore, your 7, 4, 7, 22 by 7, uh, this is an approximation of pi. And this is the another approximation of pi coming from the convergence of pi. So therefore, uh, you see that there are no in-between Convergence, all right? No in between convergence. So 22 by 7 is one of the base convergence when the numerator is a single digit. Single digit. Okay. And by using continued theory of continued friction, one can see that actually you can get up to uh, 22 by 7 is the base convergence for your Q is less than 57. You cannot get a better convergence when uh, your Q is less than 57. Okay. So so 22 by 7 is a very good conversion. Right. And uh, now I come to uh, this one, that Archimedes in fact proved that your pi lies between 223 over 71 and 22 over 7. This was proved by Archimedes. And so, so this lies between these two. And now you see that what is 223 by 71? This is nothing but 3 plus 10 over 71. And this is 22 by 7 is 3 plus 10 over 70. And I have written 1 by 7 as 10 over 70 to compare. So if I compare, you see that on the right hand side is definitely what? Greater than this. Because it is 10 over 71, this is 10 over 70. In the denominator, I have 70. Here in the denominator, 71. So this is greater than this. And pi lies between in that. And if I find that, decimal expansion of this one, I'll see that this is 3.140845, and here it is 3.142857. So therefore, your pi will definitely lie between what? This number and this number. So therefore, by Archimedes method, one can readily get that phi is approximately equal to 3.14. Right. So 3.14. So Next question is, we have seen that 22 by 7 is greater than pi. Okay, so 22 by 7 is greater than pi. We have seen that. 
22 by 7 uh, is, is greater than pi. But how much it is greater? Right? So for a long time, it was not known, uh, not, uh, it was not quantified. That means what is 22 by 7 minus pi? How much this is bigger? And this was only proved uh, in 1944. 1944 by D.P. Dalzel, uh, Dalzel that 22 minus by 7 minus pi is nothing but this integral. Okay, this integral. And uh, in the limits 0 to 1, this integral x to the power 4, 1 minus x to the power 4 over 1 plus x squared, this is a positive, non-negative. So you see that uh, this, this whole thing is what? Greater than 0. Greater than 0. So therefore, 22 by 7 minus pi is greater than 0. That means that 22 by 7 is greater than pi. So this quantifies how big 22 by 7 is over pi. Okay. So this much, this much is bigger uh, than pi of 22 by 7. Okay. Now the question is, uh, there are, I, I told you that there are other convergence of pi. 22 by 7 is a convergence of pi. There are other convergence, uh, 333, uh, 333 by 106, this is one convergence, then 355 by 113, this is another convergence. Now the question is, are there any other, are there any integral representations for these convergence also? And the answer is yes, and that was proved. Uh, so these are the convergence. This was proved by Lucas in 2009, so he proved that these are the uh, these are the quantities. How much bigger is pi than 333 by 106, and how much b bigger is 355 over 113 over pi? Okay, and uh, so so now uh, the similar integrals can be found for uh, log two, log two. Uh, so, sorry. Uh, so now uh, I have some problem here, screen. Ah, okay. So log two. So you see that uh, you can prove that log two is irrational. Log two is irrational. Log, log two is also irrational. This can be proved quite easily. And uh, so therefore, uh, and uh, what is the uh, continuous fraction expansion of log two? Simple continuous fraction expansion of log two. Uh, this is in fact um, uh, zero. The first integral part is zero, then one, two, three, one, six, three, etc. Okay, so therefore there are convergence of log two and these are actually zero, two by three, seven by 10 and uh, there's nine by uh, 13, etc. Okay, so one can find the convergence of log two. Okay. And you can also find the, how much bigger is uh, uh, log two than two by three and how much bigger is seven by 10, um, uh, how much difference is there uh, of seven by 10 and log two, etc. Okay, and this has been recently uh, we, we actually found with my student Ovisek okay, in his uh, MSc project, he actually found some integral representations for uh, log two and the convergence, the difference between log two and the convergence. So this is just a side remark I uh, want to tell you. And uh, similarly for other uh, logarithmic and these values, one can find just integral representations of the differences of the convergence. Okay. Now, there is another day related to pi, and that is called pi day. And I already told you that um, 22 by seven, we can write as uh, 22 seven. So in India or in some other countries, we write July 22nd as 22 oblique seven. So therefore 22nd July is uh, say, uh, we call it a uh, pi approximation day. Similarly, in Western uh, countries, uh, many of the Western countries, March 14 is written as three over 40. Okay, three over 40. And the value of pi to two decimal places is 3.14, as I already told you. 
So therefore, uh, this uh, March 14 is called a Pi Day. And in 2019, UNESCO adopted March 14 as the International uh, Day of Mathematics. And from 2020 onwards, we are observing Pi Day as the International Day of Mathematics. So this year is the first year where we observed International Day of Mathematics as well as Pi Day on the same day, March 14. And uh, this is actually uh, quite a long history. Uh, the first celebration of Pi Day was started at San Francisco's Exploratorium in 1988 by Larry Shaw. Okay. And um, he actually passed away in 2017. So this is uh, their Pi Day celebration. They, uh, they wrote the digits of Pi, 3.14, etc., and had a procession. So that was the first Pi Day celebration. Then uh, probably for the first time in Assam, maybe in India, our department observed Pi Day on March 14, 2008. Okay. So I want to just tell you about uh, how interesting this Pi Day observation was. So this was our first poster, first Pi Day poster in 2008. And we had several competitions, recitation of pi digits, decimal digits of pi from memory. Then we had local pi eating competition, then pi symbol making competition. So this was our pi day cake, happy pi day cake of 2008. And uh, there is a song for a birthday song for pi, happy pi day to you, happy pi day to you, happy pi day to you all, happy pi day to you. Okay, so and uh, we had some exhibition in the department. So these are all formulas of pi were written on the wall and uh, we displayed on the wall. So, and we had a pi day procession. So the students took out a procession, pi day procession, taking different symbol, uh, the pi symbols. And this is the old university gate. So we assembled there. So this is a picture. Then the, we had pi recitation. Our moderator Manzil is reciting the value of pi from his memory. And another school participant, now grown up, another one. Then the, we had some pi symbol making competition. So this pi symbol, uh, this pi symbol, this one was made up of fruits, fruits pie. And this is a flower pie made of flowers. Then we had abstract pie. Then we had salad pie. So this is this is salad pie. So you see that this is the symbol pie, and this is made of all. This is salad, salad pie. Then we had another horse pie. Another this is uh, this uh, dal pie. You can say because this pie is made of all mochur dal, mug dal, etc. This is another pie made by the school children. And there's a pie eating competition. Another pie eaters. So these are pie eaters. And we continued the following year as well in 2009. So we made a very nice, uh, better cake than the previous year in 2009. Then these are the winners of pie eating competition. And this is the winner of pie symbol making competition. So they made a very innovative symbol of pie. So all BTEC students, these uh, Ovinas, then the others, the tapas. Okay. So now, uh, so it is uh, nowadays it is very uh, popular. Um, the pie is very popular in everywhere. So on March 14, 2018, in Sultan School mascot Oman, so they made a longest human representation of pi digits. How many people were there? 1,182. So 1,182. So they made a spiral pi, 3.141, etc. by taking name, this digits. Then uh, the following year in 2019, last year uh, in UK, so they made this largest human pi symbol of 1,175. They made a pi symbol. These are all standing there 1175 then so why pi so why it is so important and i already told you that this has been studied for almost 4000 years 
and there are definitely some evidence in ancient Babylon and Egypt. So they tried to approximate the value of pi, it is three, then three, one over seven, three, one over eight, etc. And these are, uh, these are uh, the clay and stone tablets found in ancient Babylon. Uh, and uh, pi in paper, papyrus, this is MS papyrus. So here you can see that there are some uh, calculations are going on and uh, these are related to pi and other mathematical formulas. Then pi is in, in Bible also. So in Bible, uh, in Old Testament, and, that, and this one Kings seven of uh, then 23 and uh, second Chronicles fourth verse is like this. Also, he made a molten sea of 10 cubits from brim to brim. Okay, so brim to brim is 10 cubits, five cubits the height thereof, height is five cubits, then a line of 30 cubits did compass it round about. That means this is 30 cubits and brim to brim is what? 10 cubits, this is 10, sorry. This is 10, this is 30. So what is the value of pi? So it is 30 divided by 10 and that is equal to three. So Bible, in Bible, uh, this has been approximated as pi as three, okay. And pi in India, so there are many Indian mathematicians who calculated the value of pi. One of them is Aryabhatta. He, uh, so he wrote a book, Aryabhatta. So in one of the formulas, uh, he wrote like this. So in Sanskrit. Chaturadhikanga, shatam astam gunama, dwas vasti sahasranama, etc. So what is the meaning of that? Chatura dhikanga, that means more than four. Chatur means four. Shatam astam gunam, that means four plus hundred multiplied by eight. Shatam astam gunam, eight. With this, dwa sasti stata sahasranama, that means 62,000 added. This value is the circumference of a circle of diameter 20,000. So that is the formula given in this shloka by Aryabhatta. And so you see that this is pi, approximation, approximate value of pi by our, uh, our Aryabhatta. So it is eight times four plus 100 plus 62,000 divided by 20,000. And what is the value? The value, you, you'll see that this is nothing but uh, 3.1416. And what is the actual value? The actual value is pi equal to 3.14159. So therefore, at least Three this up to three decimal places, I refer to calculate the value of pi. Okay. Now, so there are many other uh, calculations of value of pi by other mathematicians in the, uh, Chinese, uh, then other uh, Greek, etc. But the first mathematical method was given by Archimedes. And what is his method? His method was that, uh, so he inscribed, so he took a circle of uh, diameter, of uh, a diameter one. So this is diameter one, this is the circle and he inscribed the circle with a hexagon. Hexagons means there are six sides. There are six sides. So this is the um, circle you can see, and this is the inscribed hexagon. This is the inscribed hexagon, okay. And he circumscribed, that means this is the outer hexagon, six sides, outer hexagon. And the perimeter of the inscribed hexagon will be three and the circumscribed hexagon will be two over root three. So therefore Archimedes started with this, that pi lies between three and three root three. Then what was his novel innovative idea was that he can double the sides. That means from six sides, he can go to 12 sides. So from six sides, he can inscribe 12 sides polygon and he can calculate the perimeter of those 12 sides polygon from the length of the, uh, the hexagon. Okay, so that is called the doubling of the sides and finding the perimeter. And 
uh, he doubled it actually four times. So doubling four times, he arrived at 223 over 70. Pi lies between 223 over 71 and 22 over 7. And this I already told you. So therefore, uh, so this is, uh, this is Archimedes method. But what is what is uh, interesting about thing is that this thing is that one can actually go on doubling the sides, and this is an iterative process. The number of sides is uh, increase. The value of pi will also be then calculated more and more after the decimal point. So this was the first mathematical iterative process of finding the value of pi, and this process was so powerful that all the calculations uh, till the calculus was uh, discovered were, were based on this Archimedes method. And uh, one of those calculations were done by Ludolf von Schirling. In 1610, he calculated the value of pi up to 35 uh, decimal places. And uh, his, in his uh, tombstone, it was written, but it was lost in 2000, in the year 2000, it was again reconstructed into, this is the Siulens tombstone, where the value of pi is written, 3.14159265, etc. Then uh, there are some notable infinite formulas uh, were discovered by, uh, by Franco Vietti in 1593. So for the, for the very first time, it was shown that two over pi has an infinite product like this, infinite product like this. Then, then in 1655, John Wallis, he actually found another infinite product. This is the famous Wallis product. And then Lord Brown Brownker, he transformed this into a very nice, beautiful continuous friction expansion. But this is not simple continuous friction. This is not simple, like two over pi is one over uh, one plus three squared by this one. So the numerators are not one, one, one. So this is not a simple continuous friction, but this is this has some pattern. It is odd squares are appearing in the denominator or numerator. So then Isaac Newton, he also calculated the value of pi. Uh, he calculated the value of pi up to 15 digits by using his own integration formula. This one, uh, uh, Isaac Newton's formula. So this is integral is integral. So, and this integral can, uh, this can be expanded first by taking uh, the binomial expansion, then integrating from zero to one over four, then one can get this infinite series. And using this infinite series, uh, he calculated the few tenses of the value of y. Uh, and uh, later on, he actually confessed that I am ashamed to tell you to how many figures I carried these computations having no other business at the time. So he was, uh, somewhat ashamed that he could calculate only up to 15 digits. Then uh, that's our second method came. Uh, and the second method, it is uh, in 1671, Gregory, he found this formula that R10 of X, or usually we call 10 inverse of X, R10 of X has this infinite series. So X minus X cubed by three plus X to the power five by pi, et cetera. Okay, and this converges for all modulus of x less than or equal to one. All right. And uh, by putting x equal to one, x equal to one, you see that this is arctan of one, that means 10 inverse of one, that is nothing but pi over four, and x equal to one in this series, in this series, so you'll see that this is one minus one by three plus one by five, etc. Okay, so this is, so pi equal to what? pi equal to, I can say that four and one minus one over three plus one over five minus, et cetera. So this is an infinite series. So you truncate the series somewhere and calculate the approximate value of pi. But the numerator of this infinite series, this is increases only by two. That means it is three, this is five, this is seven, this is nine, next would be 11, 13, et cetera. Okay, so therefore it increases very uh, only, only by two units. So therefore, uh, about 50, 50 terms will be required to find the value of pi uh, up to only one decimal places. Similarly, 500 terms will be required to get the two decimal places correct value of pi. 
similarly 500 5000 for three decimal places correct below by so this is a very slowly converging series and one interesting thing i want to uh, mention here that uh, this was found in 1671 and this was found in 1600 uh, 1600 uh, yeah, 74 but this was actually found by indian mathematician from Kerala School of Mathematics, Madhava. So it was found by Madhava uh, uh, in the 14th, 14th and 15th century. Okay. So almost uh, two years back. So uh, they found uh, Madhava found this. And uh, the, uh, those were Explained by Kerala mathematician and Nilakan Tashkamayuzi and others. So actually, this is a contribution by Indian mathematician. So therefore, nowadays we call this is Gregory Lebanis Sir, uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, your voice is not clear, so probably you can wait for a few seconds and then start. And uh, Roy Not. So there's another uh, uh, remarkable thing happens that if I truncate this, hello? Yes, sir, now it is clear. Okay. So Roy Nord, uh, in 1988, he truncated the Madhava Leibniz, uh, Madhava Gregory Leibniz series to five lux term. So K equal to one to five lux. And uh, the expansion he got is this one. So you notice this, 3.14159, this is zero. Then 6535897932, this is four zero. But the actual value is 3.14159. This should have been two. And this should have been what? 38. Okay. And this would have been 79. Okay. This would have been 79. So therefore, uh, so you have to add with this value two minus two and 10 here to get the actual value. But interesting thing is after this uh, incorrect zero of pi, incorrect decimal digit zero, all these values are correct. That means 10 digits are correct. Then again, these digits are correct. Then again, not correct, again, correct, etc. Okay, so this is a very interesting phenomenon. And he asked uh, Borwin, Jonathan Borwin of Canada, so how to explain this. And uh, mathematically, this can be explained. And uh, actually, they, uh, they took it and divide by two and we obtain that this is two minus two, 10, uh, two minus two, 10, this is one minus one, five. And these are the first three Euler numbers. Okay. And what are Euler numbers? Euler numbers are defined by the Taylor series expansion of sec second of Z. And we know that second of Z is even, even, even function. So therefore only the even coefficients will be non-zero. So these are the non-zero coefficients. And uh, E of two K, these are the Euler numbers. And Jonathan Borowin and Peter Borowin, they actually uh, proved that the difference between pi over two minus these terms is uh, this asymptotically equal to this, right? And they explain the phenomenon, why certain terms are correct and certain terms are not correct. Okay. And that happens also for other, uh, some uh, polylogarithmic functions. Okay. Then uh, using those uh, Gregory and Madhava series, Abraham Sharp in 1699, uh, he calculated 71 digits of pi by uh, taking Gregory series. In Gregory series, he, he took x equal to one over root three. Instead of x, he took one over root three. All right. So when you take one over root three, we know that uh, tangent of pi by six is one over root three. So arc 10 of one over root three is pi by six. And you expand this by Gregory series. So you get an infinite series. And this converges somewhat rapidly than the original Leibniz series. Okay, so this was used by Abraham Sharp and he found 71 digits of pi. And a similar method was used by 
John McKean in 1706, he calculated 100 digits by using this uh, Gregory type formula. Oh, sorry. This is messed up. Okay, so this is John Machine's uh, calculated 100. This is the formula. And William Jones of England, he used the symbol pi for the first time as it is used today. And before him, everybody was using different symbols for uh, sir, again, your voice is breaking. Uh, could you please uh, repeat? Uh... And uh, so in some... Sir, your uh, your voice broke. Uh, Hello. Yes, sir. Hello? Your voice was breaking. Uh, could you repeat when? again? What did you say when? in this slide? The start of this slide. Okay. Now is it audible? Still breaking, sir. Is my voice coming? Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. It is clear now. Hello. Yes, sir. Is it coming now? Yes, sir. Okay. So, William Jones of England, he used the symbol pi for the first time as it is used today uh, in his, uh, this book. Okay. So, in fact, he used this symbol while explaining McKean's calculation of 100 digits. So he was not a mathematician, but he was a, you can say that a science writer. And uh, so he was explaining how McKean calculated the value of pi up to 100 digits uh, in this article. And so, so pi was used for the first time. And after that, Euler used in uh, about uh, 1740s and that it became very popular to use the symbol pi. And so it is a very late comer in the history of pi. Only in 1706, it was used for the first time. And in 1761, I already told you that Johann Lambert proved that pi is irrational. And pi is a special type of irrational number uh, because it is also transcendental. Not only irrational, it is transcendental. And it was proved by Ferdinand uh, Lindemann in 1800. 82, that pi is transcendental. Remember that root two is irrational. And we already know, we, we, uh, we know that root two is irrational, but root two is not transcendental. And uh, because root two is a solution of the algebraic equation, x square minus two equal to zero. So one of the roots is root two, okay? And this is an algebraic equation. So root two is algebraic. And the transcendental means not algebraic. So pi, pi is transcendental means that pi cannot be a solution of an algebraic equation. Okay. So that has been proved by Lindemann. And uh, there are more uh, McKean type formulas for pi. So here another one is by Harman in 1706, then another one Euler and another one by Hutton. And uh, the first one was McKean type, McKean's formula. Uh, McKean's formula was, uh, I can write here, uh, four, four uh, arc 10 of one by five minus uh, arc 10 of one by 239. Okay, so this was McKean's formula by McKean. So there, uh, there is an interesting problem here, so the students can try, that these are the only four formulas where uh, this type of arc 10, appears only twice, okay. So here also you see that 
10 inverse of 1 by 5 and 10 inverse of 1 by 239 here, 1 arc 10, another arc 10, 1 arc 10, another arc 10, 1 arc 10, and another arc 10. And there are some constants here, 2, 2, etc. So uh, there are only these four formulas of two term making type formulas. Right? So there may be more formulas for three terms, four terms, etc. But these are the only four. Uh, one can uh, prove algebraically. So I give it to as an assignment to the students. So prove that these are the only four uh, making type formulas having two terms. Okay. And there are these are three terms making type formula. This was given by first one is given by Euler, 1764. There are three terms you see, and this is by Das, and this is by Loni. Okay. Then uh, there, there are some big uh, formulas. So there are infinitely many formulas actually. So this was given by Arndt in 1993. In 1844, uh, Johann Zacharias Das calculated 205 digits by employing this Gregory type formula, Gregory machine making type formula. And uh, Das was a, a calculator, you can say, because he demonstrated his computational skill by multiplying these two numbers in 54 seconds, then to 20 digit numbers in six minutes, uh, to 40 digits number in 40 minutes, and to 100 digits number in eight hours, 45 minutes. Gauss requested that Des be permitted to assist him, but Des actually died shortly afterwards. So he's like uh, our Shakuntala Devi. And in 17, 1873, William Sanks computed 707 decimal places by employing McKin's formula. And in the Science Museum, uh, this one, Palais de la Decaverte in Paris, uh, these 707 decimal places were inspired displayed on the roof of a room. Uh, the unfortunate thing is that uh, in 1945, D.F. Ferguson, he found that actually Seng's value is wrong after the 727 decimal place. So the museum authority actually corrected that value uh, after so many years. So it was wrongly displayed in the museum. And also the mathematical um, the world, they actually thought that William Seng's 707 decimal places was correct. In fact, Ferguson calculated 530 digits in 1945 by using this uh, McKin type formula. And in 1946, he extended this to 808 digits. Then in 1949, Smith and Rands, they calculated 1,120 digits. So therefore, so before the advent of computers, so 1,120 digits were calculated the value of pi were calculated up to 1,120 digits. Then our, this electronic computer scheme, uh, can you guess it? Okay, so you can guess that this is the first electronic computer ENIAC. This is the first electronic computer ENIAC. Okay, so ENIAC was very big so it had uh, 70,000 resistors, 18,000 vacuum tubes, 10,000 capacitors, 6,000 switches, 1,500 relays, and ENIAC was 10 feet tall, occupied uh, two mini space. Then it was weighed 30 tons, and ENIAC did 5,000 additions per second, but it was very fast in comparison to the uh, human being. And Metropolis, Ritwiger, and von Neumann, uh, they calculated the value of pi up to 2037 digits in 1949 by using ENIAC, first electronic computer. And uh, now uh, the new new computers were uh, invented and uh, the value of pi also it is going up. For example, uh, guineas, he calculated in 1958, 10,000 digits. There are many in between digits, but I just skipped those. And Sanks and Rains in 1961, uh, they calculated one lakh digits. 
And in 17, 1973, Gilaud and Boyer, they calculated 1 million digits in the new computer CDC 7600. Okay. So the, these are the pi calculations, and all these calculations were based on Mackin's formula. Now our third method came. So this is called arithmetic geometric mean method. And I will just explain what is this arithmetic geometric mean method. So we know, you know, we know the arithmetic mean of two numbers, a plus b by two. This is the arithmetic mean, arithmetic mean. Then there is a geometric mean. What is the geometric mean? A square root of a. Now you go on taking arithmetic and geometric mean of these numbers successively. So you successively go on taking this. So this is the uh, algorithm that A0 is A, N0 is A, B0 is B, then you just iterate. Iterate arithmetic mean, geometric mean, you go on. Then these both the sequence of arithmetic means, successive arithmetic means and successive geometric means, uh, they will converge to the same limit. They will converge to the same limit. And uh, this is known as the arithmetic geometric mean of a and B. So this is the arithmetic geometric mean of A and B. And uh, this, was, this was known to other things, but there are many other uh, properties which are discovered by Gauss at the age of only 40. So these are some of the properties of arithmetic geometric mean. And in his diary in 1799, Gauss calculated the arithmetic geometric mean of root two by one. And he noticed that uh, in the first instance, yeah, one can get this one and one, these are same. In the second direction, one and one. This is the arithmetic mean of this one, is the arithmetic mean of this and this. This is the arithmetic mean of this and this. Hello? Yes, sir, it is, it is audible. Hello? Yes, sir, it is audible. So you see that this is the uh, root two, the value of root two is 1.4142, et cetera, and this is one. You take the arithmetic mean of this one and this one, so we'll get this one, and geometric mean of this one and this one, we'll get this one. Then again, take the arithmetic mean of these two now, second one, then we'll get this, and geometric mean, this one. So again, take arithmetic mean, geometric mean, arithmetic mean, geometric mean. If we go on doing that, so the thing is that, so it will converge very fast. For example, here, only red color digits you consider, 1.1981, 1.1981, these are same. In the next instance, it is more than nine digits are same. These digits are same, more than nine. Okay. And next you see more than 18 are same, more than twice. This is a very first converging method. And this first converging method was, uh, in fact, many properties were discovered by Gauss. And in his diary, he, he almost wrote uh, something related to pi. And in 1976, uh, two mathematicians, Salamin and Brent, they found the AGM formula, which is related to pi, the actual AGM formula related to pi. So this is the AGM formula. So pi equal to this one. So AGM of one over one by root two, then whole square and this one. And what is CK? CK is arithmetic mean minus geometric mean by two at the kth stage. So this is the AGM formula found by Salamin and Brent in 1976, but it was actually, in fact, uh, some, some form is written by Gauss in his diary. And I think uh, Gauss was born in 1777 and uh, died in 1855, if I'm no, I, I, correct. Okay. So, so long back Gauss has uh, given some formulas and from those uh, one can actually find the arithmetic geometric mean formula for pi. Okay. And uh, this is the AGM algorithm uh, which can be incorporated in a computer and find the value of pi. So this is very fast because the successive iterations, the successive iterations will produce at the first is one digit, four digit, nine digit, 20 digit, 42 digits, correct decimal digits of pi. Okay, so this is a very uh, fast converging series and all the other uh, series or formulas uh, given by McKean and he, 
other mathematicians, those were not this type of iterative process. Uh, those, those were not iterative process. So this is the first another iterative process uh, which produces the value of pi, digits of pi very fast, very rapidly. And this was implemented by, okay, this was, oh, hello. hello? Yes, sir. it is visible. Is it okay? Yes, sir, it is okay. okay. So similar iterative processes or iterative algorithms were also discovered by Boron, Boron brothers. So Zanotan Boroin and Peter Boroin of Canada. And in 1987, they found this, um, this quartic algorithm. So uh, note that the AGM formula, AGM algorithm was actually quadratic. That means it gives uh, twice digits in each iteration. Okay, but here it gives four times, four times of the previous iteration. So this is the iterative process given by Boroin. Okay, so uh, this is the iterative iteration. And this AK converges, these AKs will converge quadratically to one over pi. And in fact, one over AK will converge quadratically, quadratically to pi. Okay, and the most interesting thing is that this is actually based on Ramanujan's modular equations. So, so they, uh, they found it from Ramanujan's modular equations. So I will come to Ramanujan. In, uh, in the next few, few slides. So this is given by Ramanujan's modular equations. And in 1983, Tamuru and Kannada of Japan, they calculated over 16 million decimal places of pi by using AGM algorithm. So, so we remember this, over 16 million decimal places by using AGM algorithm. So therefore, uh, so 1 million was uh, calculated by uh, Guye and Boyle, Boyer, and uh, in 1983, over 16 million were found by Tamura and Canada or Japan. Now, our Ramanujan came into the picture. So then our Ramanujan's method came. So, and Ramanujan died in 1920. So you see that uh, in 1983, over 16 million, million were found and then Ramanujan's series were employed. Okay, so after almost 70 years. Right? And, uh, I'll just briefly discuss about Ramanujan's uh, some, something about Ramanujan. This is mother's photograph. And he was born in Irod. And after a few months of his birth, they moved to their original home at Kumbakonam. And approximately this is 260 kilometers southwest of Madras. And this is Ramanujan's home. Their family was economically uh, not sound. And so, and in 19, 1898, Ramanujan entered town high school of Kumbakunam, and he borrowed a copy of S.L. Loni's Plain Trigonometry and worked all the problems in that book. And this book, though the name is Plain Trigonometry, but it contains varied subjects, including uh, trigonometry, calculus, infinite series, complex variables, etc. So Ramanujan uh, learned these uh, topics from this book. And he worked all the problems in that book. And at the age of 15, Ramanujan borrowed from Kumbakunam College Library another book, which is George Shubriskar's book, A Synopsis of Elementary Results in Pure and Applied Mathematics. So this is the book. And uh, Actually, Carr was a tutor at Cambridge and compiled his book of 4,417 results with very scanty proofs. There were no proofs in the book, only formulas were there. For example, A plus, uh, the first formula was actually in fact, A square minus B square equal to A plus B into A minus B. But there were mo many more interesting formulas other than those simple formulas. Okay. And uh, only formulas were there and what Ramanujan did is that he was influenced by this unusual book and he solved all the problems in this book. And by doing that, he learned many things by himself. Okay. And in 1904, Ramanujan entered government college Kumbakunam, but uh, uh, with, a, with a scholarship, uh, he obtained 
uh, due to his first class in his matriculation examination. So he got a scholarship and he entered government college Kumbhakanam. But by that time, he was totally absorbed with mathematics. Okay. So at the end of the first year, he fa failed to pass in the examination and lost his scholarship. Okay. And because Ramanujan's uh, family was poor, so the continuation of college education at Kumbhakanam ends there. Okay. And two years later, in 1906, he again entered Pachayappa College of Madras and once again failed his exams at the end of that academic year because he would not study any other subject except mathematics. Except mathematics, he would not study any subject, so he failed again, so he failed twice. And fortunately, the marks obtained by Ramanujan in his last examination is uh, with us, so we know that. And uh, how much marks he got, you, you can check it here. So in English, the maximum was 200 and minimum required was 70, so he scored 38. In Sanskrit, 100, then minimum was 35, he failed narrowly. So in mathematics, out of 150, he got, he got actually 85, pass marks was 45. And physiology and history, he did not appear. So Ramanujan failed again, so he came back home and uh, uh, his family was poor, so he was forced to terminate his formal education. So Ramanujan's formal education was actually uh, FA, first year failed. That means in modern language, uh, you can say that higher secondary failed. Okay. So working in isolation, Ramanujan completely devoted himself to mathematics. So that did not hamper Ramanujan's work. So what he did, he went on doing mathematics, 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 and uh, he carried out his initial calculation on a slate and recorded his, his final findings in his notebooks. So, uh, they, uh, and uh, these are Ramanu uh, pages of Ramanujan's notebook, original notebook. And he worked on the slate and luckily we have this slate is preserved in Madras. And uh, hello, Manjil. Yes, Hello. Sir. it is audible, yes. Yeah. So in August uh, 7, 2016, I actually, I had the filling of the slate. This is, and the other side of the uh, slate is here. Okay. And uh, in 1909, Ramanujan made it as Zanaki. And with no means of financial support, he desperately sought for a job. And uh, Ramanujan met V. Ramaswamy IR, Deputy Collector of Madras Civil Service, showed him the notebooks and asked him for a clerk's position. IR was also the founder of, he was also the founder of Indian Mathematical Society in 1907. And then IR thought that Ramanujan's talents would be wasted in a clerk's position and sent him to R. Ramasandra Rao, a mathematician and collector of Nellore. And Ramasandra Rao provided temporary financial assistance to Ramanujan a few months uh, after Ramanujan was appointed as a clerk in Madras Port Trust office. And in the Madras Port Trust office, uh, two very kind persons were there. One was S. Narayan Iyer, who himself was a mathematician, and Sir Francis Spring, the chairman of the Port Trust office. And they encouraged Ramanujan to write to British mathematicians. And Ramanujan initially wrote to three British mathematicians, Baker and Hobson, they did not reply. MJM Hill replied, but was not at all encouraging. And on January uh, 16, 1913, Ramanujan wrote to Z.H. Hardy. And Hardy recalled later on seeing some of his formulas sent by Ramanujan that uh, they defeated me completely. So Hardy wrote like that later on. I had never seen anything in the least like them before. A single look at that is enough to show that they could only be written down by a mathematician of the highest class. They must be true. If they were not true, no one would have the imagination to invent them. So therefore, uh, Hardy was impressed and he called immediately, uh, immediately called Ramanujan uh, to come to Cam Cambridge after some reluctance. Ramanujan sailed for England on March 17, 1914. And Ramanujan wrote some monumental papers, some of them jointly with Hardy. He became the fellow of Royal Society and fellow of Trinity College in 1918. 
Unfortunately, at the end of the third year in England, he became ill. When he partially recovered in 1919, he returned to India in the hope of complete recovery. But on April 26, 1920, Ramanujan died at the age of only 32. And the complete biography of Ramanujan was written by Robert Kennegal in his famous book, This is the Man Who Knew Infinity. And uh, there is a film in Hollywood, the same name which Dev Patel is Ramanujan. And there is another novel on Ramanujan by David Levitt, uh, the Indian clerk. And there are many, many other books and other movies and other documentaries, etc. Okay. And uh, he has some notebooks, as I told you, that Ramanujan left three notebooks. Uh, and there are three notebooks, so I'll just skip this uh, part. But editing of Ramanujan's notebooks were started by Watson and Wilson in the 1930s. But uh, Wilson died prematurely and Watson also later on his uh, interest waned. Okay, so therefore these notebooks were never edited uh, for a long time. And in 1957, mm -hmm. Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, TIFR, published a photocopy edition of the notebooks in two volumes, but no editing was done. So it was just photocopy. And uh, Bruce Bond of University of Illinois at uh, Urbana-Champaign, uh, he undertook the task of editing the notebooks in 1977 and completed the work with the publication of five volumes, um, Ram Ramanujan's Notebooks Part 1, that is published in 1987, then 1989, 1991, then 1994, and 1998. So Ramanujan's uh, notebooks were edited and published, but there are still many formulas and results uh, whose proofs are not given in the spirit of Ramanujan. That means we do not know how actually Ramanujan uh, arrived at some of those formulas. Still, uh, the mystery is there. Okay. So there is another notebook. So. In his last letter to Hardy, after coming to uh, after returning to India in 1920, Ramanujan wrote to Hardy his only letter from India after coming back from England that he discovered very interesting functions recently, which I call mock theta functions. So, when Ramanujan was very ill, he discovered these mock theta functions, and he has given some examples of mock theta functions in his letter, and this. Uh, mock theta functions uh, is considerably studied. And Watson proved most of the assertions in Ramanujan's letters in the following two papers, published in 1936 and 1937. Okay. And there are other work by Selberg, Groganet, and Andrews. And actually, Andrews did his PhD on the topic on the theorems of Watson and Gregonite for Ramanujan's mock theta functions. Okay, from the University of Pennsylvania in 1964. So in 1976, Andrews visited Trinity College, Cambridge to examine the papers left by Ramanujan. And among Watson's papers, he found a manuscript containing 138 pages in the handwriting of Ramanujan. And, and you find that many of these results are on mock theta functions. So these are actually done by Ramanujan. So therefore he called the newly found manuscript as Ramanujan's lost notebook. So this is Ramanujan's famous lost notebook and it was published in 1988. This notebook was published and along with other unpublished manuscripts of Ramanujan. And the editing of this lost notebook was carried out by Andrews and Barnt, and they recently completed the editing of the lost notebook, and they published the following five volumes. First one is in 205, second was in 2009, then 12, then 13, and 18. So editing of this lost notebook has been completed now. Okay. But there are many results, as I already told, for the original notebooks, which are yet to be found in the spirit of Ramanujan. The proofs of 
those reasons. So now I come back to Ramanujan and Pi. So some of Ramanujan approximations are these. So these are, you can see that uh, these are not usual approximations. And in fact, this comes uh, from what is called Ramanujan's class invariant. In his famous paper, uh, modular equations and modular equations and approximations to pi in 1914, Ramanujan uh, recorded 17 series for one over pi. And actually all these series were discovered by Ramanujan in India. So before arriving uh, in England, because these were also found in second and third notebook. Okay. The first three formulas are this. And he said that these actually arise from the classical theory of elliptic functions. So I'm not going to explain all these, uh, these theoretical things, but you can just uh, feel the flow, how it is going. Right. So these are the first three series in classical theory. And he, he gave actually 17 series. Right. And these three, three series actually appeared in a Disney film called High School Music. And this is the scene, the teacher is writing the Ramanujan series. You can see that this is four over pi is this, eight over pi is this, etc. And this is a very bright student, uh, uh, Venisa Hudson, Hudson. And uh, so the teacher was writing eight over pi. Okay. Teacher was writing eight over pi in the second series, but actually in the second series, it was 16 over So the student pointed out that it should be 16 over pi. <coughs> so, excuse me. And the teacher is asking, yeah, is it? And then uh, she checking, then correct it. So it is 16 over pi. So th that is the scene in the movie uh, High School Musical. And uh, you can visit the following link for the whole scene in YouTube, that is available in YouTube. And after offering the three formulas of one over pi in the classical base, Ramanujan claimed that there are corresponding theories in which Q is replaced by uh, one or the other of the functions, this one. So you see that this is cosecant of pi over r where r equal to three, four, and six. This is r equal to three, four, and six. And in the classical case, your r equal to two. Okay, so these are the alternative theories that Ramanujan was saying. Okay, that corresponds to r equal to three, four, and six. And uh, in the cubic and sextic series, so these are the cubic series. This is sextic. So these three series, and this is quartic series, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this is again quartic series. So three plus 14 new series for the corresponding theories. Ramanujan never returned to the corresponding theories in his published papers, but six pages in his second notebook are devoted to developing these theories. And uh, all the results of these six pages of Ramanujan's notebook were proved in the paper only in 1995 by Bruce Barn, Bhargava, and Garvan in 1995. So, uh, so it took so much time to understand what uh, Ramanujan meant by alternative theory of elliptic functions. The 17 series of one over pi given by Ramanujan were actually forgotten then. And uh, un until in 1985, in 1985, R. William Gosper, he used uh, Ramanujan's, one of Ramanujan series, this one. This is one of Ramanujan series, uh, one over pi, this one. And uh, using this series, uh, Gosper, he calculated the value of pi up to over 17 million digits of pi. 
and this was a record at the time. Okay. But the uh, thing is that this uh, formula had not yet been proved. Note that in 1983, Tamura in Canada of Japan calculated over 16 million decimal places uh, by using AGM algorithm. So when uh, Gospar calculated over 17 million decimal places by using Ramanujan series, the people knew that uh, the Ramanujan was actually correct. And, and then it was a, a new method by using Ramanujan series. So and, uh, in his book, in their book, uh, Jonathan Boroin and Peter Boroin, they explained Ramanujan's methods uh, and uh, approved all 17 series of Ramanujan. And they also found many more series uh, related to pi by using their method. And in subsequent series of papers, they found several further series for one over pi. And the Ramanujan series actually give uh, about eight digits of pi per term. And uh, Boroin's brother's series, one of, one of their series, it actually uh, yields roughly 50 digits of pi per term. So therefore, all these were uh, based on Ramanujan type series. And at about the same time, another two brothers, David and Gregory Chudnovsky, they also derived new series representations for one of our pi. And this is, they are one of the series, and they actually found uh, over 2 billion digits of pi by using uh, their Sudnovsky brother, their series in 1989. Okay. And after that, uh, many people used Ramanujan type series and more formulas were subsequently derived by many authors. So I just uh, give a sample of this. So there are many authors. So these are some of the authors they contributed to Ramanujan type series. And uh, we also actually visited Ramanujan's method. And uh, by sy systematically studying Ramanujan's original ideas given in his paper, so we established many more series of uh, uh, series, uh, Ramanujan type series for one of our pi. And in fact, we also found new such series, including series for one of our pi square. And uh, this can be found in uh, the, our papers published in Journal of Mathematical Analysis and Applications in 2008, Journal of Approximation in 2009, then Ramanujan Journal in 2010, then Transactions of the American Mathematical Society in 2011. And our series, this one, is the perfect analog of Ramanujan's famous series, 1 over pi. Okay. So, but ours is not 1 over pi squared. And uh, a similar squaring method can be used to go from one over pi to one over pi square. And uh, many of those transformations were discussed by uh, Guilera, then uh, Judilin, and many others. Okay. And for a survey of Ramanujan type series for one over pi till 2008 and nine, one can see our paper uh, written jointly with Bond and Chen, Ramanujan series for one over pi is survey. Then, uh, so that brings our third method so this is, this is our final method. This is method five. In fact, this would be, uh, this is method five. This is BVP formulas. So after AGM algorithm and then Ramanujan type series, uh, it almost felt that all the series, all those methods were saturated until one new method was discovered, which is called BVP formula type. Okay. So another series by Ramanujan, this series allows one to compute the billionth binary digit of one over pi or like that without computing the first half of the series. So can we find the series which will give the value of pi at a particular uh, digit? That means suppose I want to find the hundred digit. Okay, not finding from one to 99 digit. I want to find exactly what is the digit in the hundred position or one hundred one one h position, one hundred first position, one hundred second position, etc. So can we extract the individual digits of pi? So that was the question. And that that was answered in 1995 by 
David Bailey, Peter Borwin, and Simon Plough. So they discovered numerically the astonishing formula that pi is equal to this one. This is one over, uh, one over, you see that this is one over 16. Uh, this is, this you see that this is one over 16 power k, right? So this is base 16. So therefore, the individual digits of pi, hexadecimal digits of pi can be found by using this formula. Okay. And that is given by this, uh, this is called BBP type formula because of David Bailey, David Borwin, uh, Peter Borwin and Simon Plough, BBP. Okay. So using this formula, one can find the nth binary digit of pi or nth hexadecimal digit of pi, okay? Individual digits. In 1997, Fabric Bellard of France, he computed 152 binary digits of pi starting at the trillionth position. So by using this. In 2000, Colin Percival, uh, they found quadrillion binary digits. So you see that now billion binary and hexadecimal digits, individual expression is uh, possible. Okay. So then, but the open problem is that is there any BBP formula in base 10? That means, can we extract the individual decimal digits? So that is still open. So we do not know whether there is a formula or not. Okay. Once we can find that, then there is no point of finding uh, up to a trillion of digits of pi. Right. We can individually extract the value of pi up to any uh, position. Okay. So, there are many recent pi calculations. Uh, uh, so I just on this. So in 2009, 2.5 trillion decimal digits were found in T2K supercomputer by Daisuku Takahashi. Then in again in 2009, Fabric Billard he found 2.6 trillion. Then in 2010, 5 trillion. Then 12.1 trillion. Then in 2016, Peter Turp, he calculated 22.4 trillion. And last year, in the, on the Pi Day, 2019, Emma Haruka, uh, she was a Google, a Google employee, uh, she calculated 31.4 trillion digits of Pi. Okay. And she used 25 Google Cloud virtual machines to generate the enormously long number. But this is not the record. The, uh, the latest record is this one. On January 29th, 2020, Timothy Mulikan set the current world record by calculating 50 trillion digits of pi. So this is the current record. And all these records uh, were set by using uh, the borrowing squartic algorithm, then the, this uh, other Ramanujan type series, then Mekin type series, et cetera, and et cetera. Okay. So this is the current record of calculating the digits of pi up to 50 trillion digits. But, so that is the current status. Now I uh, conclude my talk by giving some more tidbits on pi. There is a pi mnemonics. There are pi mnemonics. What is pi mnemonics? So here you can say that, uh, don't try to extract the meaning, but this it is, sir, I send the rhyme excelling in sacred truth and rigid spelling, etc. What is this? This is SAR. SAR means there are three letters in, in the word SAR. So three, then one, four, one. So actually these are nothing but, this is nothing but the digits of pi. 3.14159265358, etc. So these are called pi mnemonics. And these are mnemonics are used to uh, memorize the value of pi. Okay. So in school, uh, we usually memorize as, yes, I have a number. Yes, I have a number. So similarly, these are pi mnemonics. There are many other mnemonics. So 
this is another one. Uh, may I have a drink? Alcoholic, of course, after the heavy lectures involving modulation. So this is 3.1415926, etc. Okay. So, and there are more mnemonics. This is Dutch mnemonics. This is the translation, French mnemonics. You can get many in the, by Googling. Spanish, then Swedish, then <laughs> fragrance of pie. So there is a company called uh, Given C. Uh, they have a pie scent, deodorant. And there is a song on pie. So this is a song, uh, this is the link. Then there are more songs, O number pi, O number pi, your digits are unending, O number pi, O number pi, no pattern are you ascending. Then you are 3.14159 and more even I, we have time, O number pi, O number pi, your ratio is mind bending. Okay, so these are pi songs. Another pi song. And then this is another song. And this is actually MIT's, um, MIT's this football cheering song. E to the U, D U D X, E to the X, D X, cosine second, tensile sine, 3.14159, integral radical, U D V, slipstick slide rule, MIT. Okay, so this is to cheer up their football team. And there is a place of pi in Guinness Book of World Records. That means uh, how will you measure the memory power? Okay. So how to measure the, this, how fast we can run? There are 100 meters race, 200 meters race. So there is a race for memory. Okay. So this is, uh, the pi is the landmark. You can say pi is the main, uh, main thing which we can measure how many digits one can remember. Okay. In 1973, Nigel Hoses, he memorized 930 digits. And in 1973 itself, Fred Graham, he memorized 1,111 digits. Then in 1973, again, Timothy Pearson, 1,210 digits. Okay, so you, you just see the right-hand side, how it is increasing. Okay. 1,505, then 4,096. 4096s, and this was memorized by Simon Plough, and the same Plough of BBP formula. Okay. Then 5050, 6190, so the race is going very fast. Then 10,000 digits in 1978, uh, David Sankar. Then David Fiore. He memorized 10,625. Then Creighton Carvillo of UK, he memorized 20,013 digits in 1980. And our Indians, uh, they are also not bad. So in, you see that in, on July 5, 1981, Rajan Mahadevan of India memorized 31,811. So due to paucity of time, I will not uh, speak about him now, okay. but uh, the uh, story is very interesting. Then uh, on March uh, 10, 1987, Razan's record was broken when Hideki Tomoyori of Japan, he memorized 40,000 digits in 1987. But that was broken in 1995. In 1995, it was broken by Hiroiki Goto by memorizing 42,195. But that was also broken because uh, in 2005, Chao Lu of China memorized 67,890 digits. And that was also broken in 2015 by Indian Rajbir Mina of Velour Institute of Technology. He was uh, a former student of VIT. He memorized 70,000 digits. And this is the current Guinness Book of World Records but it will be replaced because this, you, you know the date here. You know the date here, March 21, 2015, and it was broken in October, actually uh, 21, 2015 by another Indian, Suresh Kumar Sharma of Jaipur. He memorized 70,030 digits okay. and set a Limka book of records, but uh, Guinness book of world records has 
not yet confirm the owner, but I think that his name is in the uh, list of uh, the best Pi memorizing people. Okay. So let us see uh, how, how, how many digits you can remember. The first 10,000 decimal places. This is not 10,000 because this is the first slide. So I will just rule this uh, fly, uh, slides. First slide, second slide, so third slide, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. So there are seven slides uh, to write. So we have to break. So your voice is again breaking. Uh, if you can wait. It's not an easy task. The first uh, book written on Pi. Hello. Sir, your voice was breaking. Could you repeat the last part again? Which one? From which, which part? Uh, uh, so when you showed the last slide from there, uh, the this one. No, the, the is yes, the last slide of the digits. Yes. Yeah. So there are seven slides uh, to uh, to write ten thousand digits. So to break the record, seventy thousand thirty. So you need how many slides? You just calculate. So almost fifty slides. Right. So almost fifty slides. You have to remember like this. This okay, so that was my observation. Then there are many pie books. So, this is the first pie book, A History of Pi by Peter Redman. Then, this is Pi and the Asim by the Borwin brothers, where the series of uh, Ramanujan were proved, and many more series were given. Okay. And uh, this is Joy of Pi, is another biography, a biography of the world's most mysterious number. Then these are pi unleashed, making type series and other formulas are well explained here. And then this is another new book, the number pi by American Mathematical Society. And this is the pi a source book. Okay. Uh, Bargren, then Borwin brothers, they have written a pi uh, source book where uh, many papers and papers were actually edited there, uh, or collected there. Uh, so it is a big volume book, a pi, a sword. And this is the latest book, Pi, the next generation. And this is, you can say that this is the supplement to the Pi, a source book. Uh, there are almost, uh, I think 25 articles uh, written on, on recent development of Pi are included in the last book, Pi, the next generation. So that ends my talk. So I have some incomplete acknowledgements. I would like to thank all the members of the organizing team of Ganit Sura, especially Manzil uh, for his uh, kind invitation and for the initiative they have taken to organize this uh, talk. And uh, if, uh, uh, so this is, the, uh, if there is any question, then I can try to answer or I can guide. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir, for, for this very nice talk and very interesting and very engrossing talk. So we learned a lot of things about Pi today. And uh, there are a lot of questions, actually. So I'll, okay. um, let me bring you up on the screen and then we can see you. Yes. Um, so the first uh, question is uh, from Bebhav. So he's asking that uh, he everyone okay. is calculating the value of pi using trigonometric functions. Are there other methods to do it? So this was uh, this this question came when you were explaining the first method. So probably you already okay. Uh, okay. I think uh, he might have got the, his idea how people can commit. Yeah. Um, so there is a question from uh, Suruj. So he asks uh, in the calculation of pi by Sir Isaac Newton. Is there any reason of taking the integration from zero to one over four? Oh, that, that he uh, did it by a geometrical construction, All right? So the curve he considered, actually that is from zero, to, uh, it, it, it fits it from zero to one over four. 
on my port. Um, there is pie, in, in, in the book pi a source book that is explained uh, i have given the names of the book in the chat so the participants okay. can copy the names from there if they want uh, so there is another question uh, this asks is there any research going on to calculate the value of pi with the help of fibonacci series and equivalence classes of cauchy sequences of rational numbers Okay, so for Fibonacci series, actually uh, for uh, making type formulas, so one can generate infinite number of making type formula by using Fibon uh, Fibonacci numbers. Okay. Uh, that, is, that is not very tough. So you see that in Euler's formula, we have uh, pi over four equal to 10 inverse of half plus one over three. Okay, two and three are Fibon Fibonacci numbers. So similarly in the Rutherford's formula, you will see in the denominators are Fibonacci numbers. So one can actually generate infinitely many uh, such uh, Fibonacci, uh, Fibonacci uh, lists. And so another part was, are there any formulas uh, generated by uh, using equivalence classes of Cauchy sequences of rational numbers? Uh, so that I do not know. Okay. okay. Uh, there is a question which asks, uh, what is the most convenient series to calculate the value of pi, which has been discovered until now? Uh, if you ask me about uh, using computers, then uh, this uh, Borin's quartic algorithm that has been used quite extensively. So that is the best uh, they say. Okay. So what is the what? is the formula used in the latest calculation to generate uh, the large number of digits of pi? Uh, I think he's referring to the employee of Google. Yeah. So they, they, they also use this uh, making type and uh, this. Uh, Sir, your voice is breaking again. Sir, can you hear me? Sir, can you hear me? I think uh, the speaker has been disconnected. So we can wait for one minute to see if he comes back. So he, he mentioned in the beginning to me that his network was not so good today. In the meantime, I'll close the Facebook live feed. Okay, Sari is here again. Sir, can you hear me now? 